Welcome to the Jeffer Tree. I'm your host, Baxter Leak. Today's contestants are a politician from Toronto, Ontario, Amira Citrus, a not so great farmer from Toronto, Ontario, Hamlet Ismus, and our returning champion, a house sitter, Caddy Nephron, whose five day cash winnings total is $532,601. How does she keep winning? In case you missed last week, Caddy dominated the competition, getting every question right, leaving the other contestants with zero winnings. Let's see if she'll give the contestants a chance this week. Good luck. And the categories. Inventory progress. Total numbers. Species. Stewardship. True and false. All right, Caddy. I'll take total numbers for 200. The total number of species in Long Branch. I'm gonna say, uh, what is 22? Nope. Um, what is 219? Correct. I'll take total numbers for 500. The total number of trees, not including hedges, that have been inventoried in Long Branch. What is 7,067? You got it. I'll take inventory progress for 400. The percentage of private properties in Long Branch that have been inventoried. What is 50%? Yes, about half of the private properties have been inventoried. Over three summers, teams have averaged about 40 to 50 properties per week. I'll take true or false for 200. The team only inventories private properties. What is false? Correct. The team's goal is to inventory all trees in Long Branch. This includes city-owned street trees and park trees. I'll take true or false for 300. The minimum DBH size for trees to be protected under the City of Toronto bylaw is 50 centimeters. Uh, excuse me, Baxter, uh, what is DBH? DBH is actually diameter at breast height. And the answer is what is false? Correct. The tree only has to be 30 centimeters in width. This is the length of a standard ruler. I'll take true and false for 500. This is a sugar maple. Uh, actually, it's what is a Norway maple? Exactly, correct. You're, you're, you're brilliant. Let's do species for 100. Number of maple species in Long Branch. What is 12? You got it. I'll take species for 300. The most common species found in Long Branch. This species here, Baxter. That is a white cedar caddy. Hmm, I see a lot of those in my backyard. I'm gonna go with what is white cedar. Correct. White cedars make up 15% of our canopy. We really need to be planting less white cedars. Okay, uh, species again for 400. The most common street tree species in Long Branch. What is silver maple? Yes, closely followed by Norway maple. Let's do species for 500. The largest trees in Long Branch, those being with the DBH greater than 100, are often this species. What is a silver maple? Yes, by far. Silver maples make up 64% of our large trees, followed by large red oaks at 25%. Okay, let's start stewardship for 100. What is the minimum area needed to plant a tree? That would be five meters. Yes, five meters of canopy space is the minimum needed for a small tree or shrub. But wouldn't you know something like that, Mr. Farmer Boy? I'll take stewardship for 300. This species is being removed from our canopy due to an invasive pest from Asia. Um, I'm going to go with ash trees. Correct. Yes, the emerald ash borer is responsible for killing many of our ash trees. I'll go with stewardship for 400. What is the main cause of death of young trees? Um, what is underwatering trees? Correct. Unfortunately, we're out of time. But keep it locked, because Final Jeopardy Tree is up next. Today's question is, what are the benefits of the Neighborwoods Project on the urban forest? Let's see what our contestants came up with. Hamlet said, what is to determine the value for logging? That is incorrect. Let's see what it'll cost him. 
He bet all his money. He is now at zero dollars. Amira couldn't come up with an answer on time. Also bet all of her money. Let's hope Caddy got it right. Caddy wrote, what is understanding canopy makeup and where more trees can you plant it? We'll accept that. What does that bring her to? $200, meaning she is tonight's winner. Let's hear what our neighbor Woods lead expert has to say. Good afternoon, my name is Judy Gibson. I'm the vice chair of the Long Branch Neighborhood Association and I'm delighted to have with me today Dr. Purik Mladenovich, and she's from the University of Toronto, Faculty of Forestry. And she's here to answer some questions about our Neighborwoods program in Long Branch. So good afternoon, Dr. Purik Mladenovich. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you so much for the opportunity to talk about trees. Great, great. Wonderful to have you here. So my first question is, you've been working with us for three years now. But why is neighborhoods and inventorying trees important for communities such as Long Branch? Um, because in, in Ontario, Toronto, and in general in North American context, uh, the majority of urban forests, it's in fact on private land. 50, 60%, in some cases, even 80%. And you know, if a private landowner doesn't look after those trees or a community, uh, who else is going to do it? And that's, that's why it's important because even though like our trees, like those behind me or, or behind you, or there are trees, but they make our neighbors, you know, um, we share them with the whole community. So it's, um, it's very important to keep them. Great, thank you. And what have you observed are some of the unique benefits to Long Branch from working on neighborhoods for the past three summers? Um, to be honest, it's the way how the community got organized and, and started with the inventory and uh, proceeded towards stewardship. And that's exactly what uh, Dr. Kenny and myself envision about neighborhoods while we do inventory to provide base information, ba baseline knowledge, so we can see what's happening over time, what we have, what we don't have. Um, the main goal was uh, to engage the community so they can feel that those trees belong to them and that they can look after trees. And I think um, Long Branch did exactly what we envision. And that's why all of this is so exciting. So how can we best use the data we've discovered so far from our tree inventory? Um, there are definitely uh, data can be used as, as I mentioned for stewardship to develop stewardship management plans that can range from like a city block, from a property to the whole neighborhood. Um, science and research by no means uh, planning future uh, uh, tree planting um, perhaps areas that are lacking trees and targeting those areas to talk to those landowners or even like saying these areas are doing well so we'll just keep an eye on those trees and uh, make sure that they stay there. Um, we know that the development is a huge pressure for, for the long branch. Having the baseline and what you have now, uh, it provides a strong um, evidence what could be lost because um, we did in the past our analysis of canopy loss but if we had uh, an inventory we could have put some numbers like how much it's it's lost like what what species what the amount of carbon biomass so it, it gives you power to make better decision and 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 envision your community as a green community and not just, oh, we love trees. We can, yeah, we love them, but we have data that we can prove the concept. Well, when you looked at the top species of trees we found in Long Branch, is there anything in particular that jumped out at you for Long Branch compared to data you've seen from other communities? Uh, most likely it's silver maples because and, and, and silver maples, uh, I can see why, because Long Branch, it's close to the shore. They used to be planted uh, 
before uh, street trees. Uh, I suspect that the, the community has some remnant uh, silver maples, again, because of the nature being close to the uh, uh, shoreline. Um, the other ones, uh, um, of those few remnant oaks, I mean, by no means, that's, that's a, such a value finding something that uh, most likely it's still from, you know, a couple, two or 100 years ago. Um, diversity of species, I think I counted, it's about 130 species and that's, uh, um, that's quite impressive. I mean, it's, it's, for, for a neighborhood to have so many. We know that many of them are, let's say, garden species, like one that is next to me, like red maple, Japanese red maple. People like that tree. Fortunately, it's not invasive. So, you know, we don't have concern about that. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I would say, again, the size of some trees, by no means, it's, it's mind blowing. Like the tree that I'm underneath right now, my silver maple. Exactly. Tree. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> like the oaks, um, as I said, some silver maples. It's uh, uh, and, and it's pigs because it's older community, so it's no surprise that we see larger trees. But we have to make sure that they stay there. <laughs> yes. So where do we? Where do you recommend we go from here? Long Branch has now inventoried a little over fifty percent of our properties, our private properties, which normally, for research purposes, would be a large sample. Where should we go next? Yeah, exactly. By no means it's a large sample, and uh, you know, as I mentioned, developing a detailed stewardship plan. We're certainly. Um, you know, we as a university would be happy to support that either by, um, you know, developing plans for individual properties, uh, developing maybe by, by a city block, take one chunk at the time and say, this is the worst area, we will we'll start here. Um, data is par powerful and I can see, you know, so many analyses. I could see like a, a few honestly master of science papers that could be very practical and relevant to the community. Uh, and something that, that would support long-term planning that you could take and say, this is what we envision as a community, like a community planning for urban, urban forest and use that as an evidence when, uh, when you talk about, um, you know, to the city. Uh, this is what we value as a community and we have community behind us. Um, oh, I can see so many things because it, as I said, you guys did something that um, we had communities doing it, but what's exciting about your community that, that you, you didn't do just inventory for the sake of inventory, but to use it for stewardship and, um, and better planning. So for people who have not yet participated in our community on this project, what message do you have for them? You know, if you like tree, you de trees, definitely you should be part of this. Uh, if you're kind of sitting on the fence, I, I'm okay. I, you know, I don't hate them. I don't love them. Again, if, if you let us collectively to, you know, the Long Branch and U of T to get on your property and see what you got. That's great. And for, for those of you that you may not like trees, um, I would encourage you, like they're part of our life. Just, you know, try to look at them in a different way because this is, we have just one land. And if Long Branch is your community, enjoy what, can offer in terms of green and um, it's you know I know it's a it's a fall now and many people will say oh I get so much so much leaves but you know imagine if it everything it's a concrete just think about downtown Toronto versus Long Branch it speaks on its own well thank you so much Daniela for all of your help and thank you for joining us today at the tree fest yeah, thank you so much and looking forward uh, next year. And we are as well. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Bye. Take care, Judy. Bye.